I think you might have a problem there, Chad. Slow one. Doesn't look normal to me. It's gonna make a great video for you to fix it. Oh, well, if we do it. You know, it's always fun to try to uh, do something a little bit more outside the box. It's even more fun not to have to troubleshoot somebody else's thinking outside the box. Well, Chad, do you think we should lower it and see what changes? I mean, I can see uh, a broken weld right about there. Keep your fingers out of holes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo, it's a lot of movement there. This closes more. It did close a lot more. I watched everything move. Let's see how that broken weld were. Oh, it's a lot tighter now. This is a uh, unofficially known as completely buggered up. All those welds are broken too. And this, where the uh, tube got seamed together, that entire seam tore apart. Hey Chad, that doesn't look like a very fun job. No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Let me give you some back background on this big horn. Uh, this is a customer that ha actually stored this down in Rocky Point, which is in Mexico, which is uh, kind of Arizona's uh, San Diego. Uh, we call it Rocky Point. It's actually Port Puerto Penasco. That's in Sonora, Mexico. And he just left it there on the beach for I don't know how many years. And then he picked it up and he drove up to northern Arizona. And on his return back, he noticed that there was quite a bit of uh, flexing in the... <laughs> on his front overhang area as he brought it back into us to uh, take a look at it and see what could be done about it. So it's pretty uh, obvious from uh, the get-go that there was some big structural failings on this, let alone the uh, all the cracking and the lamination on the sidewalls. That's probably been a uh, chicken and egg thing. Did one cause the other or did the other cause the other? I don't know. Uh, it is very normal for the sidewalls underneath the, those front bedroom slides on most RVs because it's so narrow for that sidewall to crack. So much so that most modern RVs already have a, uh, a crack with molding underneath it. So it's a controlled crack at that point. Uh, so we knew we had to tear it all the way down and take a look at what, what we had to do. No longer staying, whatchamacallit, right there. Right. This thing obviously weld these together. Uh -huh. And then since this is the main structure here, but yeah, that part's fine. I beam. <laughs> that part's fine. Would be like a, a big gusset from here that spans both these instead of just the one, and then ties back into here, and then do one on that side. I'm sorry. Uh, so that way it'll be more points of contact to the main section of frame. No, I think it's. Not a bad idea. As long as it'll all fit back in here with the propane tank. I mean, we have a, a radius right here, right? Yeah, it's pretty tight. Oh, is it tight? Well, because I have the aluminum wall that goes right here. Oh, okay. So it's this radius is real tight. I was going to say, can we put a angle iron at least weld in all the way across? No. Uh, maybe. I could do like a piece of angle here. But... I have to get that wall back on. Wall it's just a the wall. There's a wall there. Um, what about like closing this in right here? I mean, it'd be hard to do with angle. Well, and at least what I was thinking of when I was doing that gusset uh -huh. would be to go from here around, and then so it'd be like a funky one where it goes all the way around, and then big meat so it would tie this, 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 this all together, one to the meat, and then do the same thing on the back side. So be four of those. Okay. I think you're gonna have to re-secure this too. They all pulled out. It's weird. Yeah. You know, this isn't the first time I've seen these uh, front overhangs have problems. I just can't get over how gross this one looks over here. And so that kill me. I am I am not supposed to be alive anymore. Yeah. Probably explains 
Your side walls look quite a bit, huh? I think. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if that fatigue was caused by the salt air, poor, uh, poor maintenance, a uh, combination of all those things. Because you don't see this very often, that, that, that much of an elaborate problem. But I have actually seen it about two months earlier on another uh, fifth wheel. Very similar build, very similar model. Six gallon jugs. Six gallons. That's 45, 48 gal, 48 pounds. One, seven. Seven. Seven times four. Seven times four. Thirty-two. I math. We'll go with three hundred and fifty. Three hundred fifty pounds. We'll, we'll call it fifty-eight. Fifty pounds a piece. Because you got you know the tank's gonna wear something. It's got at least maybe a pound. Uh I mean. Lots of steel, lots of weld, lots of time, lots of grinding. Yes. Well, I guess we're starting the welding now. There's a lot to do here. There's a big crack. You have big hopes? So, did you got any big hopes about this? Yeah. All right. Pretty good pair of penetration you got there. Is that a preload? Huh? Is that a preload? Nice. So ideally. Ideally. That sounds like a lot of work that I didn't sign up for. Well, it did seem to deflect a little bit still. Huh? That gooseneck seemed to deflect quite a bit. I didn't see it on the sides. What? Here. Where? Uh-huh. This I think you know we did okay. Remember how this was like... Well, yeah, it was... Uh, here before? Like an inch? Uh-huh. Now it's not. It's better. Much better. I have to find those videos. Is that wall not flexed either? Uh, not really. Yeah, I remember like when you lift it up, this was like an inch down. Alright, right. you gonna go down or no? Huh? You going down? Yeah, take it uh, all the way down. You can see that. Just drop it all the way in the spawn's feet. Well, what do you think? Alright, pick it back up. Well. Well, it moves over here, but uh, it's aluminum to steel movement. That's it. Yeah, it moves a little bit here, but it's aluminum to steel movement. Right. Drop it down, Micah. Go down. Down. Yeah, it's just a little bit of steel movement. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you, the kingpin is definitely flexing. Well, yeah. Especially right here, you can see it too. Yeah, I don't think you can fix that. Well, I don't know. I know they do flex. Yeah, they do flex. All right, pick it back up. That was a weird sound. A spot wheel pop? Yeah, that little tack. Oh, that's not that important. Well, I mean, we're not done, we're just testing. Well, you still have to put that one support in that you're going to put in. 
I missed it all. The plasma cutting? The plasma cutting. Oh, it's the easy part. I know. Should it work out? That's it pretty good. He's gonna go ahead and box in this opening right there. Make really powerful gusset on both sides. Well, and that's what it looks like all put back together. Big old gussets there. All painted up. I think we got rid of any uh, flexing issues now. Now we just have to put it back together. This metal frame is going to go back up in there. And let's put the cover back on. All being welded and reinforced. I don't know. It's very alarming to me. We're not, again, structural engineers. It, now, this is a uh, big horn from Heartland. So Heartland doesn't even make the chassis. They would have bought this chassis and started building off of it. So they can't even be blamed on it. It's just endless, endless problems, it seems like. That looks good. Should be pretty strong now. I'll have Chad check it out for us. I can't hide these rev stuff. That's the floor of the bedroom, Chad. Yes. Because what? Well, there it is. By my account, that's a lot better. Much better. Especially once this gets all secured. Huh? I don't think most people know how important the sidewall is on a, on a trailer. The frame itself has has little strength without the sidewall. Chad used some steel rivets here. That looks pretty good. Very proud of you, Chad. Oh, thanks, James. I know you don't hear it enough here. Well, it was really bad. So without tearing this thing all the way down to the frame, there's not too much you could do other than what you can do. Alright guys, I know Chad's been working pretty hard on this big horn getting to put back together. Yes, we do know there are cracks in the sidewall right there. That's water damage. This thing got left out in uh, Rocky Point for a number of years. And so it was quite neglected. But the way this uh, frame was, it was unsafe to travel. So it, it couldn't even uh, bring it up north or hook it up to a a, a truck without it falling apart so Chad do, does have it put back together I'm not sure why the steel why the steel like this steel right there and the uh, the steel itself is made it's usually formed and then there's a uh, a um, a welded seam right in the middle let me see if I can get a so here's a, a box of it so. I don't know if you can see that seam right there. That's what failed on all that metal underneath there. That that uh, that welded seam split. And so this entire uh, box is just opening and closing like that. That's a very discouraging. I don't, I mean, what else can you really be done? Definitely it could have been maybe engineered better but Heartland didn't engineer the frame. The manufacturer, the f well, I don't know, maybe they did. I, I could be speaking wrong. Now, I don't know if Heartland actually did make this frame. Generally, most of these uh, trailer manufacturers are buying their frames pre-made, usually from Lippard or BAL or a few other coach manufacturers. Uh, not coach manufacturer, but chassis manufacturers, and then they build off of it. But even the frame manufacturer, they just got steel from a steel supplier. So this was quite a, a puzzle to how to put back together as inexpensively as possible. Since obviously, if you see that sidewall, it's not a, something that's gonna be sold again very shortly uh, or live, uh, lasting much longer. I think this is just more of a, an off-grid sort of a escape. 
It's definitely not the first time or the third time or the tenth time I've seen framing issues from a fifth wheel uh, pin box king pin flexing quite a bit. But now that we have that all back together again, I think we're doing pretty well. You can kind of see how much it used to move. That was a lot of flexing right there. I'm very impressed that Chad got this put back together so well. It's looking really good here. And uh, these are actually pretty nice fifth wheels. And we got that all welded back up inside too. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize is you see these outriggers right here that come along. That goes to the frame. And the entire sidewalls are actually mounted to this right here. Very little of the, uh, the this frame right here is being carried by the actual trailer frame. That's just carrying the, the load off the axles. So the sidewalls from a trailer actually get incorporated and act as quite a bit of structure, make the, the, the trailer a lot stronger. So the, the sidewalls are pretty vital to these. Well, that was it. I just thought it was uh, something interesting to look at. Been following this uh, repair for a couple weeks now. So we had to figure out what was going on. Chad had to contact the customer and see what they wanted to do what we could do for them and uh, hopefully he's got a little couple more years left in this thing point of fact don't take these down to Rocky Point and leave them on the beach for a couple years unattended that's not what they're meant for so you may not have seen this before but with all that flexing it broke a little bit so we just went ahead and uh, upgraded them to a little kick bite Chad did a good job well I have to order a jack that's almost as important order a, jack. a tongue jack a trailer Your neighbor? no well somebody you gotta oh yeah yeah you gotta make it special Liner, man. Looks so much better. I know, I love this stuff. Makes a nice better finish on it. Looks professional. No, I agree that it's not a good bed liner. Oh, it's a horrible <laughs> bed liner. But it's a great paint. Uh, we did not do a complete rebuild on this. Like I said, I think it's just heading back up north again and it's going to be staying at somebody's property. But it had to be able to uh, get there safely. Alright guys, thanks a lot.